Welcome to Free Thought Matters. I'm Dan Barker. I'm Annie Laurie Gaylor, and we are co executive directors of the Freedom from Religion Foundation, which produces this show about non believers and the vital need to keep religion out of government. FFRF is the nation's largest association of freethinkers. That includes atheists, agnostics, and skeptics. And FFRF works as a state church watchdog. Please join us or ask for a complimentary issue of our newspaper, Free Thought Today, at FFRF.org. Today, Irish eyes are smiling. Malachi McCourt is an Irish American actor. He's an author, a politician, and an outspoken and happy atheist. He has appeared in many movies, including The Molly Maguires, The Brinks Job, Q, Brewster's Millions, The January Man, and Beyond the Pale. He also portrayed a priest every Christmas on the soap opera All My Children. Malachi McCourt has acted in the plays Inherit the Wind, Love Letters, and a couple of blackguards, which he co-wrote with his older brother, Frank McCourt. Frank McCourt is the author who wrote Angela's Ashes. Malachi was the owner of the famous Malachi's Bar on Third Avenue in New York City, and he was the 2006 Green Party of New York candidate for governor. Malachi McCourt has written a number of books, including Malachi McCourt's History of Ireland, uh, a book about the song Danny Boy, two memoirs, one is called A Monk Swimming, and another singing a hymn song. Him, H-I-M, H -I -M singing my hymn song. And Malachi McCourt's newest book is called Death Need Not Be Fatal, which asks, what's so great about the great beyond? Uh, Malachi hosts his own radio show in New York City, and thank you so much, Malachi McCourt, for joining us today. Uh, my great pleasure, Annie. I'm Dan. It's grand to be with you. Uh, we occasionally have uh, telephonic conversations, but this is, I think, you know, laying, laying eyes on each other is much better. Yes. For the first time. So, <laughs> well, well, Off we go. Speaking of radio, you know, we host a radio show, and you host a radio yeah. show, and you had yeah. Annie Laurie on your show, and right. you, you had a co-host on your show who once accused you of being an atheist evangelist. Is that true? Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, the, yeah, my, my, my friend, uh, John McDonough, uh, he is the, my, my co-host. But it's, uh, we're always trying, we're always playing with words. And the, that's what they are meant to be, isn't it? Uh, mm -hmm. I, I enjoy them. There's a, uh, uh, John Millington Singh once said that uh, the words in a play should have the texture of a crisp autumn apple. Uh. And I am, uh, I am un uneducated in the, in the formal sense of the word because uh, I was very stupid in school and I, I failed uh, what they have in Ireland, the, the, the uh, primary certificate which every kid at the age of 12 got, but, uh, but I didn't. Huh. But uh, the uh, Irish ambassador, the Irish minister for education, who was the equivalent of secretary, awarded me an honorary primary certificate. <laughs> so uh, that's the only one that's ever been awarded. But leaving, uh, leaving school, I felt, I felt I couldn't, I couldn't get what they were talking about. And the only thing is I did uh, ha got a great feeling for the language. And I liked, uh, as a, I love that hmm. staying crisp autumn apple about yeah. words. So you, uh, your brother was Frank McCord, who also loved the language. And uh, he wrote about uh, your childhood. Was that, uh, you were a younger brother. Was that a shared experience? What he wrote oh, absolutely. Us? Yes. We, uh, Frank and myself, uh, well, he also left school at 13 and went to work. We were both messenger boys at a very early age. Uh, but Frank was my in influence because he was, ex he, I think he must have been 
some kind of a genius. He, um, because he he got me on to reading very early, and there there it was. But he um, he died uh, about ten ten years ago, and but he was always scribbling, writing, keeping notes. He left school at 13. He came, we were both born in America. And so he was managed to come back and he sent for me. But he got drafted into the army. And when, and he somehow or another faked his way into New York University here and uh, got himself a degree, a BA. And then he got a master's. Although he didn't have, I think he was the only high school teacher in New York that did not have a uh, high school diploma. So uh, he did well. He so did you, very well. You, you boys, you're one of six or seven siblings, I think. You seven. Were, you were raised as, a, a, I, I presume, a good Catholic boy, uh, probably a believer, and now you're an atheist. What happened in the, somewhere along that road? Well, Ireland is um, savagely Catholic, <laughs> and uh, it, the, the, the threats of hell if you didn't, uh, if you if you were late for mass, came in after the first gospel, if you ate meat on Friday, if you ate meat uh, during Lent. If you, uh, as they said, interfered with yourself, which was uh, simply masturbation, but sex was the great thing. That was it. Any, any, anything, all sins of the flesh, they were always yapping about that. And so the fear of hell was uh, inculcated into us with uh, constantly about the fires, about the walls of hell are 400 miles thick. Ah, that the pains of hell, that they stick uh, spears in you, knives and forks, they cut you, burn you, but the pain is eternal, it never stops. <laughs> and goes on and on and on. So uh, it was uh, uh, terrorism. Yes. Religion was terrorism. That's the way it was with us. So you started um, doubting early in, 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 as a young boy, correct? Oh, we had to, yeah. There was a, yeah, we were, and to make your, your first communion, of course, you were six, and you went to confession, and you told the priest your sins, and you talked about breaking the commandments and so on. And when you're, when you're six, you don't know <laughs> what you're talking about. I mean... Here am I, six years old, telling the priest that I committed adultery. <laughs> I didn't know that. What the hell am I talking about? And he, he kind of, he, I, it was a muffled laugh from behind the, the screen. <laughs> so I, I committed all the sins. Uh, I didn't, uh, I was late for mass. I uh, had bad, bad thoughts. I disobeyed my mother. I was late for school, I was late, blah, 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 and went on, yeah. So, and, so you're an atheist because you just don't like God, or did you have some reasons, too? Well, it, um, being an atheist, it was a transition, and, uh, and it, was, it is, it is uh, very peaceful. Um, it isn't a question of... Uh, non-belief or disbelief it has uh, because I am on uh, during the week I am uh, I'm an atheist and on Sundays I'm a pagan <laughs> because I believe in everything I believe in the sunshine I believe in the moon the beauty of clouds stars I believe in love. I love my wife, Diana. I love my children, all nine of them, my, my, my five children, nine grandchildren, a great grandchild on the way. I have uh, wonderful, loving friends. And the world is just full of love. That's all there is to it. 
And I don't need um, a god or any kind of deity to in give me love. And I have, and I don't know about these uh, figures. Great guy uh, named God walking around. At, uh, I mean, somebody said to him one time, where are you going in your holidays this year? He said, well, I'm not going on, going on Earth, he said. I went there 2,000 years ago, and a girl got pregnant, and they're still talking about it. <laughs> so the, so, so uh, they're blaming him. <laughs> Malachi, you, for years, every December, apparently played a priest on the soap opera, yeah. All My Children. So as, a, as an atheist, um, you must have gotten a bit of a kick out of that. Oh, I did. I have played, I did a, a play called Bass Appeal. I played a, on Broadway. I played a priest on Broadway. I played a priest in uh, All My Children. I played a pre, uh, 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 I did one, a couple of movies where I played a priest. Uh -huh. Well, you look and like a priest. Like eight, eight times. I do, yeah. yeah you yeah. look like a classic I, I, Irish <laughs> priest. I, ha I have that saintly look about me. <laughs> so we have, yeah, I took, we have to I take a break. Collar. We have, to, yeah. we have to take a break now, but when we come back, we want to ask about why did you write a book about the Irish song, Danny Boy? Yeah. And we still want yeah. to talk about um, your book, uh, Death Need Not Be Fatal. We're talking with Malachi McCourt. We'll be right back after this. Hi, I'm Steve Pinker. In my book, Enlightenment Now, I show that the world has become a better place as reason has been overcoming superstition and tribalism. But the values of the Enlightenment are under attack. That's why I'm a proud member of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest association of free thinkers working to keep state and church separate. Please join me in supporting the Freedom From Religion Foundation to ensure that our government is driven not by religion, but by reason. I'm Chris Calvi, and I am proud to be an out-of-the-closet atheist. Hi, I'm Chris, and I may look like Jesus, but I'm an atheist. And you know, atheists are sometimes accused of leading lives that are cold and bleak and meaningless, but that's not the way I see it. To me, I don't believe that there's an afterlife. And that realization that this might be the only chance we have makes my life feel incredibly important every day. Also, knowing that help is not going to come from above imparts on me a profound sense of urgency to work together to solve the world's problems and alleviate human suffering. That's why my purpose in life is to try and leave planet Earth a little bit better than it was the way I found it. I'm a graduate student. I'm studying microbiology and I'm trying to develop renewable biofuels before it's too late. And welcome back to Free Thought Matters. We're continuing our conversation with the always entertaining author, uh, politician, activist, uh, comedian, Malachi McCourt. <laughs> So, Malachi, uh, your most recent book is called Death Need Not Be Fatal. Yes. And it says, what's so great about the great beyond? Um, mm -hmm. So this is a book also, I think, exploring many of the losses in your life. And also, you're going to be um, 90 this year, correct? So you're also yeah, looking yeah. At, at mortality. So you could talk a little bit about that book. I, um, I, I'm, I am... Uh, fascinated by and with uh, passing, as they say. People don't die here in America. They, they pass. Leave. They leave. They're gone. <laughs> they pass. And they're gone. With the Lord in the arms <laughs> of Jesus, uh, they're uh, at rest. I love that. And they say, R.I.P., rest in peace. Now, why would you want to do that? Why not keep active? And then the, 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 the ones who are good are seated, as they say, at the right hand of God. On the left-hand side, 
there's me and Karl Marx. <laughs> and uh, so you sit for eternity looking at God's right earlobe, watching the hairs grow. <laughs> and then, but they, those people on the right hand of God have to look left, you see. So, so and, and, and uh, because he's, he's right ear lobe is on the right, of course. And then, um, so it's also bloody silly that we go, we are transported somewhere. And uh, there's a place where you are, if you go good, if you're, you're fine. Uh, if you're good, you're, you're going and sit forever. If you're bad, you go to a place called hell, where told thousands of miles of uh, walls and eternal fire, and you're getting poked and prodded with pitchforks and swords and all. It all so, so terror. They're all so much rubbish. But uh, but my my belief is that we when we we're walking around every day. And we are on the streets, mostly. Now, you see an ant, and you either deliberately or inadvertently walk on the little thing. But there, you wipe it out, and that's it. So do we think an ant has a soul, or a housefly has a soul? Why don't these living things have souls and, uh, and go places that we we, we 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 are constantly sending ants and flies to heaven or We're hell. On the board thing. Maybe yeah. there's an uh, ant uh, hell. Well, an ant ant hell. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. There's an ant hill. Ant hill. That's right. Yes. Ant yeah. 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 They, they, they had a ball movement. An ant hill <laughs> and the ant hell. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to just to change the subject, you also have a book. You did a whole book about the song "Danny Boy," and of course, yeah. Dan was named. Yeah, my for mother that song? loved that song, "Danny Boy," and she named me Danny because of that. So, yeah. Um, what What does your book say about that song? Everybody loves that song. Well, it's uh, the air of uh, "Danny Boy" is uh, old. It's about a four hundred year old uh, melody. But the song itself is not Irish. It is uh, written by an English man named Frederick Edward Weatherly. And he wrote it to a different tune. And uh, he didn't, it didn't work out. He, he was a barrister from uh, uh, Bristol. And he wrote the song, and he didn't like it. But then his sister came across. She heard the melody that is usual of Danny Boy, <clears throat> he in America. And she sent him the melody and he put it to, he put the words to that melody. And then uh, it, was it was 1910. He wrote it about Dan, about his son, at the age of 10, when he was 1903. But then uh, the, 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 the clouds of war were just starting to hover over Europe in 1913. And that Danny boy then became, as the war did come, it became the ultimate goodbye song. Hmm. And that, that, that's how it came about. So uh, the publisher of the book, they actually asked me to write the song. So I said, OK. That's what I did. Well, it was, uh, it's a lovely song. Now, when you came to New York City, you made quite a mark. Uh, I believe you kind of pioneered singles clubs. You opened singles bar. Singles yeah. bars. Did you open? Yeah. Up? What was, what, what's it called? Is it well, still the running? Well, the set was, the set was the first singles bar in America, actually. And uh, there was a, a, a hotel around the corner from the bar. <laughs> which was uh, uh, for women. And, uh, but women, for some reason, were discouraged from sitting at bars in New York. And uh, everybody thought that it was against the law <laughs> that they were soliciting, women were. So I said, women of all kinds are welcome in my saloon and they can sit where they like like anybody else. Huh. 
That so was called that's how Malachi's Malik. Bar. Malachi's Bar. Malachi's so, yeah, so you had yeah. a feminist uh, purpose behind that. I did, yeah. Good yeah, for I you. said you could say, yeah. And a policeman once tried to give me a ticket and I told him, quote the law <laughs> where it says women can't sit at the bar. And the poor misfortune couldn't. So that ended that harassment. So you must have met a lot of people then in New York City. And then you, you ran for governor on the Green Party. Is that right? I did, yeah. Wow. I, uh, yeah, I joined. I was the, the uh, you know, here in New York, there's Republicans and Democrats. But they're both, uh, there was a lot of corruption and uh, uh, ridiculous kind of political, how good they are and how, uh, what they're doing for the blah, 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 blah. And I just said, I'll join up the Green Party. And, and so they nominated me. I got 48,000 people voted for me. Wow. I don't know why. <laughs> They liked your bar. Maybe they liked to, they liked to go to the Maliki bar. Yeah, I was I was out of that business. By I got out of that business because I was uh, I was a very good customer. <laughs> well, speaking of, of my... speaking of business, uh, I read. Tell me if I'm wrong here. I read that you used to be a gold smuggler. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, I. <laughs> I yes, Dan. I was. Um, I met a guy. He was. Uh, from Connecticut, and he had a kind of that lock jaw way of speaking. Uh -huh. and, he, uh, and he was involved in a blah, 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 blah. And would I like a job that involved travel? So I was going through a bad time. I was going uh, divorce, and all things were going. I would lost the bar, drank my way on. And then, uh, so he said it involves travel to India go and taking gold. So I had this corset thing, and uh, I took 20 kilos of gold from uh, Zurich uh, to uh, Bombay. I did uh, met six trips. And wow. I often thought about if, <laughs> if it was, if I, it would have been five years in jail in India, if I, wow. if you survive, but most people don't, mm -hmm. most Westerners, don't survive Indian jails. Well, you've had a lot of adventures, and they include um, acting in the play Inherit the Wind. I think it was a run of about yes. seven months. Mm -hmm. Which part did you play, Maliki? And I cannot think of his name. Uh, oh, you played the, I think you played the uh, religious, the person who did, yeah. is like the, William the, Jennings the, Bryan. Yes, that's right, yeah. Huh. And Jason Miller, who wrote, uh, he wrote, uh, so, um, he wrote a play. He was a Pulitzer Prize winner. And so uh, he, he played the Dan Starrow part. But I was a very, I was the Bible quoting guy. So, so that's very interesting. <laughs> um, the, uh, we interviewed the actor Ed Asner, who's also not religious. And he, oh, sure, played, yeah, yeah. he also played the William Jennings Bryan role. So both of you yeah. non-religious, what was that like yeah. playing that fanatic? To be an atheist well, playing I, a creationist. Yeah, I, I, well, as I say, I'm an atheist, thank God. Huh. <laughs> so, well, yes, uh, it, it is, um, it's another part, there it is, and you can uh, a, a distance, you can keep a distance from it that you don't have to think you're saying the right thing, the wrong thing, you're merely doing a part. That's right. And you're talking about, you're, talk, you're reciting, uh, about uh, God, who was a uh, kind of a fairy figure, a fairy, you know, that mystical, non-existent is, is the word I want, yeah. So you've had a lot of adventures, and I'm wondering, how are you keeping during this pandemic? Reading a lot and uh, making a lot of notes, and uh, I've happily married to Diana for 56 years. My children, are in a number of them are here in New York and grandchildren. And I have a granddaughter in Nevada who's about to give birth to my first great child. Wow. So uh, I will, she's going to make me great. 
like the guy who's going to make heaven great, uh, uh, America great again. The fellow, <laughs> he, he used to be president. Oh yeah. He's going to make, yeah. I forgot he's his going name. He's going to make, a, make America great <laughs> So I think that he's going to go and make hell great again. <laughs> I hope there we are. <laughs> I know that uh, there's another guy gone now, and he's uh, handling a hot shovel, a uh, rush limbaugh. Mm. And I wish them all, uh, I wish them all a nice heat, uh, hot place, <laughs> especially in this in this weather. <laughs> So we have about 30 seconds left. Are you still doing your radio hosting? I do that every Sunday at WBAI in New York, what, as you know. What's the name of the show? Uh, uh, it, I forget. Oh. <laughs> Maliki McCourt and John McDonough. It's a, it is uh, Aaron, 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 Radio Free Aaron. It is ah. Radio Free. E-R-I-N, yeah, Aaron. Aaron. Yeah, a yeah. lot of a lot of a lot of virus stuff goes on there. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. It's been always a pleasure. It's always fun talking with you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Anne Marie, and uh, thank you, Bruce, for getting us through this. <laughs> it was uh, a hard job, Dan. Well, so thanks. blessings and live every day as if it's going to be your last, because one day you'll be right. <laughs> there we are. Good advice. <laughs> Well, thank you again, and thank you for watching Free Thought Matters. Because free thought matters. I believe in an America where the separation of church and state is absolute when no religious body seeks to impose its will, directly or indirectly, upon the general populace. Let's restore respect for America's secular roots. Help the Freedom From Religion Foundation defend the wall of separation between state and church. Join us at FFRF.org. Freedom depends on freethinkers.